So now our header looks good, at least within the viewport sizes that we can adjust with the browser without going into the viewport simulator. So let's go down and adjust our slideshow. This is the one item that we haven't adjusted for a responsive design yet. So I'm gonna click it to get the large amount of text. And let's think about what we want to actually happen here. It seems like what might make sense is that we take a similar approach to what we did in our other slideshow, where we try to show the entire text within the framework here and actually hide the next and previous buttons at a certain breakpoint. We can hope that by having the pagination at the bottom down here, it will give users a sense that this is a slideshow, and also as they scroll, it will automatically scroll as they go. So even people with touch screens should be able to see that they can play with these slides. Okay, so I'm gonna reduce the size of this a little bit, and let's see where this margin is coming from here on the right. So I'll inspect an element, and I'm gonna hover over container elements and look at how the element is colored in the browser. So here, once I get to the UL, we can see a bunch of margin or padding here on the left. So I'll click that, and sure enough, here it is, our padding left. So let's adjust this to say padding left zero. Okay, so that gets rid of that space, which fits in more of our text, but it seems like there should be a little bit of padding to this side. So let's actually adjust the padding so that we have 20 pixels to either side. And then let's adjust the width so that it fits the entire size. So let's do width, auto, and now if we adjust the size of the viewport a bit, we'll see our text fitting within that space. We can go to the next slide, and that will also fit within that space. All right, let's make these styles permanent for a specific breakpoint. So now I'm going to disable them, and let's expand the screen until we get to the point where we would want that. So at about here, it still looks good. So maybe about 820 pixels should be our breakpoint. Now I'm going to use the browser editor here to navigate to slideshow.scss, and it looks like we're setting the width and padding here. And so what we wanna do is adjust this so that now we have a breakpoint. So I'll include breakpoint, and again, this is gonna be a max width. And again, let's see, that was about 820 pixels. So we'll set it to 820 pixels do an opening and closing bracket, and we'll override the width to auto, and we'll do the padding zero for top and bottom, and then 20 pixels for right and left. Let's save this and refresh in the browser. Okay, so as we get smaller, we hit our breakpoint right about here, and it looks like we can reduce our screen size, and it works pretty good. So now we just need to hide our next and previous elements. So if we scroll down a little bit here, we see those selectors down here, flex direction nav A. So we'll add a breakpoint here, but before we do that, let's take this 820 pixels and turn it into a variable. We'll call the variable full width breakpoint. And I'll scroll up to the top and add this within our slideshow. We'll set it to 820 pixels. And now we can copy this breakpoint here and add it into our flex direction nav A, which again should handle both the next and previous icons. So we'll just set this to display none at this point. Let's save this and refresh in the browser. Okay, so now we're small, and as we get bigger, our next and previous buttons show up, and we can click those. Smaller, they disappear, and everything kind of shrinks up. 